What is going on everyone and welcome back to another video and today as promised I just wanted to jump on here and do a side-by-side -side comparison of the marsupial bino harness and stack it up against the kafaru bino harness uh, being that I have recently received the rangefinder pouch and also the accessory pouch. Um, I also picked up the navigation pouch which you can see I do not have attached to the bino harness. Uh, we will talk about this. I will give you my overall thoughts and opinions and if this is something that I plan on using at a later date. Now for both of these bino harnesses they're both top end you really can't go wrong with either one um, they do both have their pros and cons which we'll talk about in this video but we are going to break this video down into different segments and talk about um, the features and designs of each of these bino harnesses like i said the intent of this video is just to give you guys an overall understanding of the pros and cons of both of these bino harnesses just so you guys can make a better overall purchasing decision uh, and, and decide which one of these harnesses is going to be right for you and your hunting style. So um, as far as the similarities go, these bino harnesses do share some, so we're going to talk about those first. Um, these are obviously both forward flip designs. Uh, they are both made with the Kodura fabric, uh, and they both do a great job at securing your binos, and both offer the ability to attach different accessories to it. Now keep in mind, the marsupial bino harness is offered in three different configurations, whereas the Kafaru one is only offered in one at the moment. I have their standard bino harness here, but they also offer a magnetic fully enclosed bino harness, and then they also offer a non-magnetic fully enclosed bino harness. Now, I've talked about this before on the channel. Um, I had originally purchased the magnetic fully enclosed bino harness through Marsupial. Um, when I initially purchased this, uh, I ended up sending it back because I just felt like it was too bulky on the chest, and then went with their standard version, which was a little bit more slimline. Now, as far as the colors go, uh, the Kfaru is only gonna be offered in their Ranger Green with the tan accents. Coyote tan or coyote brown accents to it. Whereas the marsupial, they do offer a couple different uh, color options that you can select from. Now, I would say most recently, it seems like the color options are the, or at least the newer color options are only available on their magnetic uh, fully enclosed harness. That seems to be their more popular one. You're not seeing a lot of the newer color options on uh, the standard bina harness. And actually the, the non-magnetic fully enclosed is actually only offered in two. Um, um, I do believe they're, that they're actually phasing that bino harness out. But as far as similarities go, um, that's basically it. Now, uh, starting to break down these differences, we're just going to start to go over each one of these bino harnesses, uh, and then we'll kind of shift over to each one and talk about the features uh, and the pros and cons of each of them. So um, looking at the marsupial bino harness first, you can see that this is a very um, simple design. It's a very sleek profile. Um, there's not a whole lot going on in the front. They obviously do have that front zipper pocket, which is nice because it does give you the ability to store a handheld release. I used to carry my Carter Wise Choice in there. Um, you can throw SD cards in there, SD card readers if you're checking cameras on the go, um, and then also any type of lens cloth. Like I said, you do have some options. Now there are two side pockets on the side of the on both sides of the marsupial bino harness, uh, and those pockets are. Uh, are, are actually a decent size. Um, I can fit an HBC hinge in there. I can fit my Carter Wise Choice in there without being in fear of losing it. Now, as far as Molly connection points go, there is a connection on both sides of the marsupial bino harness. And then there's also Molly webbing on the very bottom. So if you wanna take a look at the variety of accessories that they offer on their website, and they do offer a lot more than Kafaru does at the moment, um, but you'll be able to attach a variety of different accessories to this bino harness. Now, the other feature about this bino harness is it does have a, a padded mesh back with a pocket. So again, if you're looking to store tags, lens cloths, anything back there that you really don't wanna lose, cell phone, you'll be able to stuff it back there and it's gonna make sure that it keeps it safe. Now, as I already mentioned, this is a forward flip design. It does utilize magnets. I've talked about this before in the past. Um, I am not a fan of magnets on my bino harnesses just due to the fact that it was recently um, and it's probably always done it I just didn't realize it up until last year when I was out hunting public but this definitely does mess with your GPS system it messes with it the end the direction indicator I did a video on this I'll post a, a thumbnail in the video so you, if you guys want you can go and check that out at a later date uh, but it definitely does mess with it and and that's really what led me to kind of looking at 
different options for bino harnesses. Now, as far as the Kafari one, as I already mentioned, this was a new release this year. I was very excited when they announced that they were coming out with a bino harness. I'm a huge fan of Kafari products. They do a great job. They're extremely durable. And all the products that I've owned up until the bino harness and even, even the bino harness um, have, have withstand all the abuse that I throw at it. But as far as uh, the outside construction of the Kafari bino harness, as you can see, it does have a little bit slimmer of a profile when compared to the marsupial standard version uh, but obviously it does have a lot more molly connection points so um, there's molly on the front and that's actually how you're going to attach the navigation pouch uh, there's also molly on the very bottom and then they also have two side pockets which is made of the stretch fabric that they use on a lot of their backpacks now uh, these pockets are a little bit smaller when compared to the marsupial one uh, but i can still fit a wind puffer uh, milkweed in there i can still run my hp BC hinge on the side, uh, but I would not feel very comfortable running my Carter Wise Choice on that side pocket because it is a little too small and it, you do run the risk of actually losing it. Now, um, in addition to that, there is also a mesh uh, padded pocket on the back, um, just like the marsupial. And again, this one is a forward flip design. Now, one thing I do want to mention about the forward flip is obviously this is not utilizing magnets, so you do not have to worry about this messing with your GPS. Uh, and then Kafari also implemented a design that allows you to adjust how much tension is on the lid. So you can adjust this uh, to your preference. If you like it a little bit tighter of a fit or looser of a fit, you're gonna have that ability to adjust that. Now, um, as far as the straps goes on both of these bino harnesses, we're gonna shift back over to the marsupial. Um, so the straps on the marsupial obviously do come with a little bit of padding on it. Uh, this is a very comfortable riding bino harness, but one thing that I have never liked about this bino harness is the fact that they have these top buckles. Now, uh, the only issue that I have with these top buckles is it lacks adjustability, so um, you don't have a whole lot of range for you to adjust how high or how low you want this bino harness to run. And then also, in my experience, I've been out on hunts where I've actually had these clips come undone. And then probably the thing that drove me absolutely crazy about this bino harness if I, if I was hunting in cold weather conditions i these buckles would squeak in cold weather now keep in mind marsupial does offer a buckle elimination kit where you can basically mod this out it does allow the bino harness to run a little bit higher uh, but it is something that you have to purchase um, in addition to the the bino harness and any accessory pockets that you uh, that you run now as far as like the side connection straps there's definitely enough adjustability to accommodate a slimmer guy and all the way up to a bigger guy. Um, I do believe that they offer an XL version on the shoulder strap. So um, if you need that, you do have the ability to. Now, like I already said, the straps are padded, which in my opinion, are very comfortable. Also, the stitching that they use on the shoulder straps does a really good job at actually pulling those straps away from your neck. And like I said, it is overall, it is a very comfortable bino harness, where if I compare that over to the uh, Kafari bino harness, you can see that their straps are very thin. They don't offer any padding. Actually, I think a lot of people on the Kafari uh, Facebook page have kind of been complaining about this. Uh, but I will say, in my experience, I didn't find that this bino harness was uncomfortable. Um, I did go and shoot uh, an archery event out in Indiana, um, and at that point, it was super hot. I was really sweating in this thing, and I did not want to continue to sweat in it through the summer months. So at that point, I did shift back over to the marsupial when I got home, and I could definitely tell that there was a comfort difference between these two. Uh, but at no point did I ever feel that the Kafari Ubino harness was really uncomfortable to the point where I wouldn't consider buying this as a possible option for a bino harness. Now, as far as adjustability goes, this is is going to accommodate a wide variety of people um, body sizes because there is a lot of tag ends I talked about this in my first impression video um, that there's there's for me at least there's more than I actually need so I'll probably make uh, some type of modification to cut some of that tag end off now as far as the straps riding on your neck this is really going to be dictated on how high or how low you run the bino harness I feel like the higher you ride it the closer the straps are to your neck um, and as you can see on the Kafari 
you buy no harness, the strap's actually free floating, which I don't think does a very good job at keeping those straps away from your neck. But again, at no point has it ever been uncomfortable for me. There have been times when I've gone out, like for instance, when I was shooting the Total Archery Challenge, where those straps were kind of, um, I could feel them on my neck. So at that point, what I would do is I would just pull the collar of my shirt and make sure that that stayed between the strap and my neck. And again, at no point did I have any issues. Now, as far as the inside of the bino harnesses, let's go ahead and open these up and talk about uh, the material that's used on the inside. Now, with the marsupial, they actually did a really nice job on this. They use like a fleece lining in here, which does a great job at protecting your binos. I've had this harness for probably close to two years now. This thing has seen a lot of use and you can see that there's no real wear um, showing on that fleece lining. Whereas if you look at the Kafaru bino harness, they use uh, a mesh fabric, which is very similar to what they use on a lot of their backpacks, um, definitely on my shape charge. Uh, but one thing that I wanted to point out is I've had this bino harness since the summer. So it hasn't, you know, roughly about three, four months. And you can see uh, where the binos are actually wearing into that fabric. Now, I don't think it's something that's going to rip or fray over time, uh, but it is something that I wanted to point out. Now, as far as like the, the features that you get on the inside of the bino harness, this is where Kafaru is definitely going to offer a little bit more when compared to the marsupial. Um, you do have two stash pockets on the lid of the Kafari bino harness and then you also have a pretty big stash pocket on the very front and one guy um, on the Kafari page kind of complained that I didn't show this uh, but obviously this will hold your phone now let me put my binos back in here uh, but this obviously this pocket will hold your phone now me personally in my defense I would never carry my phone like this in my bino harness I just I just wouldn't do it. I would just run it in my pocket. But as you can see, um, you can still close the bino harness completely with the phone in there. Keep in mind, I'm running an iPhone 14 Pro Max with an OtterBox case, so it is a large phone. Uh, but like I said, I can still close it. This is a small bucket, as people are calling it, and this is a small bino harness through marsupial, just for the reference on the size. But for me personally, I'm just gonna run my release right in that pocket. I feel like it's a great storage option. Whereas if I can pair that over to the marsupial, uh, when I would run my release in the marsupial, my Carter Wise choice, I would put it in that front zipper pocket, zipper it closed, but the button would always hang out. And if I wasn't super careful while I was hanging a mobile set, sometimes that button would ting off one of the steps as I was climbing up. And like I said, you would get a little bit metal on metal contact. Um, so I do like, I do really like that feature on the Kafaru one. Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about is accessory pouches. Now, as far as the marsupial goes, this is a forward flip magnetic design. Um, if you're not careful uh, with the, the bino harness and then also the accessory pouch um, or the rangefinder pouch, you can hear that there is a little bit of a snap. So you do need to be careful with these magnets when you're closing and opening that bino harness, um, especially if you're hunting close to bedding area, if you're doing a spot and stock. Uh, but the rangefinder pouch does a great Great job has that same fleece material now the one thing that I never liked about the marsupial is the fact that the connection point never really rode really tight to your body it had the tendency to kind of flip forward I've played around with different mounting options on this and could never really figure out the best way to carry it so I just put it where it was intended to go um, like I said I was never a huge fan of that whereas if I compare that over to the Kafaru bino harness. Uh, they actually have these wings that come off the, the bino harness, the accessory pocket, and also the rangefinder pouch, um, Velcro to the side. And what I really like about it is it helps mold it to your body. You're not getting any sag on it and it's not tilting forward. It stays very, it's a very form fitting bino harness. Now, as far as the rangefinder pouch goes, um, very similar design as the bino harness. It is a forward flip design. It does have that interior mesh lining uh, and it also gives you the ability to adjust the amount of tension on the lid now a lot of people have been complaining that the cover does not completely cover the rangefinder in the pocket for me i don't experience that because i i, I am running a leupold rx uh, full draw five so this is a slimmer profile um, rangefinder so i don't have any issues with closing it but i also don't see why that would be a big deal because if you compare that over to the marsupial one this one doesn't completely close around your rangefinder either there's also a gap on the side on the marsupial so if you were worried about debris getting in there 
you're going to experience the exact same thing on the marsupial one. Now, um, one thing that I do want to point out, and again, I already mentioned this, but you do have the ability to adjust the tension on the lid, which is going to help kind of keep this thing closed. Now, in testing, I've experienced that when you're closing it, is it a lot easier to close this and you can get more of a secure closure where it's actually fully enclosed on the rangefinder. But if you put your finger in that loop, that, that webbing loop, and then go ahead and just tuck it over and kind of just push back on it, it closes completely. Um, I don't really have any gaps, um, anything that really stood out to me or, or would really um, cause any type of complaints on the rangefinder pouch. Now, the one thing that I did notice immediately and I was kind of surprised by this, is Kafaru didn't give you anywhere to actually attach a rangefinder tether. Um, they don't on the bino harness either, as far as your binos go, um, but the bino harness is a super snug fit where um, you, you don't have to worry about your binos accidentally falling out, whereas the marsupial, um, I would not run this bino harness without having some type of tether attachment to your binos because if it's open and you bend over, you will 100% lose your binos out of here. Uh, but like I said, I was surprised that far you didn't offer that on their rangefinder pouch. Uh, but basically what I did is I just took my, my rangefinder tether and I just attached it to uh, the bungee cord right below the knot and right uh, or I should say in between the knot and the tension um, adjustment clasp and it, it's held on there really well. So as you can see, I do have a range finder tether on my bino harness and it's a, like I said, it's a secure fit. It's not going anywhere um, and I do really like that design. Now, as far as the accessory pouch goes, uh, the accessory pouch, I'm not 100% sure on the dimensions on the one for the marsupial one. Um, I never decided to purchase that because for my intended use, um, and I plan on carrying my Sony ZV-1 camera in there, it would not fit that. So again, I never picked it up. Um, I'll put the dimensions in the video so you guys can compare um, the sizing on both of these, but they are both a zippered pouch. Uh, the marsupial one um, is, is, a, is a top zippered, whereas uh, the Kafaru one is almost like a side zipper that still allows for that forward flip design. And this one is a little bit bigger, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this, I can completely uh, fit my Sony ZV-1 camera in there. So for me personally, um, from a filming standpoint, I've been looking for an accessory pouch to attach to a bino harness that gives me the ability to carry that camera for a long time. So I was very excited to see that it fit in there. Now, real quick, I do wanna talk about the navigation pouch that is offered through Kafaru. Um, this is a decent size pouch that you can add for additional storage capacity. They've marketed this as basically as a way for you to store your phone so you can lay it on there and you can kind of navigate as you're moving through the woods. You can zipper it closed. It's going to keep everything safe. Um, this is a pretty decent size pocket. I was actually able to put a small 38 revolver in here um, and it stashed it extremely well, carried it very nicely on the bino harness. But one thing that I do want to point out is if you put this on, it is going to overhang the bino harness a little bit on both sides and it is going to prevent you from going to what I would consider the full tuck mode and I don't think that this is going to be something that I'm going to run because personally I do like to maintain a very slim profile on my harness but I do think that this is would be an outstanding option to toss on if you are doing like an out west hunt and you know that you're going to be you know navigating unfamiliar area quite a bit or you want to gain some additional storage capacity or or like I said even carry a small um, sidearm like a 38 revolver so definitely a pretty sweet option not something that i'm going to run at least for whitetail now one last thing that i want to talk about is the the lids on both of these obviously with the marsupial being that this is a magnetic design um, it does open and close a little bit easier when compared to the kafaru one um, obviously once you flip it open it just magnets to the bottom stays open you don't have anything to worry about whereas the kafaru one i mean it open and closes very easily but if you want to go full tuck mode you do have to use both hands but the more I shoot with this bino harness the more that I find myself just basically just pulling this lid down and just leaving it open especially if I'm constantly closing and opening it this lid does not ever get in the way of my bowstring. I've never had an issue. I've never had it make contact. Now, if I go and do like a whitetail hunt where I'm going to be sitting in a stand all day, obviously it's no big deal for me to just use both hands, go full tuck mode on it. Same thing with a total archery challenge event. Um, I just ran it in the full tuck mode the entire course. At no point was I concerned about losing my binos out of it. Uh, but I did want to point that out that it is a little bit easier to just go 
like the full flip mode on the marsupial versus the kafaru. But like I said, you can definitely close the kafaru bina harness with one hand and you get a, a secure enclosure um, just like you do with uh, the marsupial one. But um, that's it for this direct direct comparison. I hope this answers all of your guys' questions. If it hasn't, you can always reach out to me through the comments. You can always reach out to me directly on Instagram. I'm happy to help in any way. If you guys have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Your guys' support greatly helps us out, keeps us doing what we're doing. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you on the next one.